Hi, my name is Emily. I'm a faithful follower of Christ, and this is Carnivlog number 40, and it's my final Carnivlog because that's that's it. That's it. That's all I have to say about that. And there are plenty of experts out there to listen to about every nutritional um, topic under the sun. That is not what I'm on this planet for. I don't believe I am. I may or may not have done Brightline Eating just so that I could have met a couple people. I may or may not have done Carnivore just so I could learn a ton about the moo moo cows in my backyard and how fantastically perfect they are. Um, uh, Forrest Gump said, and that's all I have to say about that. And that's how I feel about all this food talk, especially since we have scheduled the final court hearing. I got the official petitions to adopt in the mail. It's so cool. These super formal pieces of paper from our lawyer and the judge's office. Um, I'm sitting in the church parking lot. They just took my five little kids to a trampoline park. I went home and took a nap and dreamt that my kids got sick at the trampoline park. I'm so glad I don't think that happened. Anyways, I have just enough time to tell you all that I'm done. Carnivlog. I'm going to continue um, with my three year commitment. Remember those? Anybody? Any, anybody? It doesn't matter, but I made, um, you know, this 100 day, there's the church van, 100 day countdown. I took a thousand of them and I've committed to the Lord that I'll be carnivore for three years, or at least that I'll stay on that trajectory, that that'll continue to be the goal. And that's what I'm going to do for the next, I think there's 800 something today, some days. There's been 993 days since I made my very first bright line eating video. 993 days later, I'm here to say, this is a hike. There's no going back. We're going to move forward. Hikes are not smooth. We're not on the road. We off-road, and when we do, we learn a lot. Franklin told me last night, wow, I think I'm at the peak of my 10-year-old life. He said, I made the academic team. I made the basketball team. I did this. I did that. I said, honey, you are, and it's only up from here, and here's why. Because even the lowest points in your life are high points of your life. Because it's in these low points. It's in these valleys. The Lord strengthens our muscles, our emotional muscles, our mental muscles. It's all good. And we are hiking and we're headed to heaven. So this is my final carnival. The other night I had a horrendous stomach bug. Can you imagine? I did not want meat. My first carnival, I talked about a stomach bug. I'm talking about one now. I did not want meat of any sort afterwards. And I thought, I'll just have salt. But then, oh my goodness, here's the kids. Get away from that. Stop fighting over the door, you guys. Oh my gosh, these kids. Hey everybody, welcome back. Franklin, were you in here on the way here? Yes, she was. Franklin, were you? If you were, get in the back. Yeah. Okay. Right. Fair enough. Hi, everybody. Hi, Come on in. Did you get your backpack? Good. Yeah. Houston, head to the back, please. Just so. Yeah. Houston and Daniel, head to the back. Just so that Hi, Mommy. Franklin can hop in. Hi, everybody. I'm finishing this final carnival. Um, Franklin, I was telling him, even the low points in our life are high points because those are times where God teaches us so much. And I wouldn't trade them. Wouldn't trade them. That's when we get forged in fire and fortified. And um, and I was telling Jill, this is all forward motion. So even when we're hiking and we're tripping and we're falling and we're flipping and we're flopping and we're f navigating our way through this human experience, um, we are by the grace of God learning. And I have learned that um, carbohydrates, when I consume them, have pros and cons. And after that horrendous stomach bug, I will not go into details, Sprite and saltine crackers. I was like, Greg, why? Why do I? Why are these amazing? Is it because of the sugar? And he was like, Well, yeah, because it's instant energy. And I had instant energy. I don't know if that's good, bad, or ugly for the ways in which I'm gonna quit using the A word. I'm over it. Um, addiction. You know what? Unless someone can, and they can't. Unless, unless it's in the Bible. Unless there's actual scripture about it. I don't want to take any earthly concepts and just hang my hat on them because 
of course I'm tangled up with sugar, but sugar is something we can burn to as fuel. So I used to say it wasn't energy, it was stimuli. Well, yeah, part of it is energy. I might not be in ketosis, but I'm burning something for the energy that I had these past 48 hours and it was wonderful. And I was taking these kids, I was taking a couple kids to visit their biological mother. I was taking all of them to basketball games and I had energy to do it. It wasn't just stimuli. So I was not burning fat for fuel, but I was burning sugar and it was because it was simple and it was not complex and it was not hard for my body to burn and it was so wonderful after having had that stomach bug. So that was yesterday. Today I'm still all up in the carbs to the point where I even ate whatever I wanted at the church potluck and let all this, my, my entire congregation, my entire congregation that has heard me talk so much about sugar addiction and sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine and I lost 100 pounds and I've gained some back. And by the way, sometimes when you gain weight back, you know what all you need is bigger clothes, bigger clothes. Am I exactly the weight I want to be? Well, no, but will we ever? Will, I mean, come on, let's. I am sensing God telling me that food is no longer the focus of this channel. So if all you want to hear about is food, goodbye. I love you. There's plenty of people you can go listen to. And by the way, beware, beware. You can easily get caught up. Frank, hold on just a second. You can, did you give a, Armstead his baseball card? Do you love it? Good though. So sweet. Guys, I want to hear all about it, okay? I'm almost done with this. And this is my final carnival. Y'all yell at Miss Elizabeth. Tell her, thank you so much. We had so much fun. If you tell her. Tell, tell her, thank, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, guys. Thank you. I was the only one who said thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I said thank you. Good job, Franklin. All right, roll your, roll your windows up. Beware. When you listen to experts, they are experts on what is working perfectly for them that's fine they have anecdotal and yes they have all sorts of evidence and and research and and but I guarantee you there are people that will swear by square and there's people that'll swear by round and people that are swear by square as a uh, rectangle that wasn't very creative um, my point is pick a color pick a shape pick a fruit pick a pick a food pick a exercise, pick a um, state, pick a environment, pick hot, cold. If you want to find them, you will find people that will swear by that. And here's, here's my point. Beware of the echo chamber that you will put yourself in. If you over and over and over and over and over and over and over, listen to people that tell you that this is the way to go because that is the way they're going. And again, it might be so perfect for them, but there are unquantifiable factors and nuances to each of our own individual lives. My pastor this morning prayed and said, isn't it amazing that there are millions of people right now doing just what we're doing, praying to God and he is hearing each one of us individually. Beware of the echo chamber that you'll put yourself in if you listen to experts that are experts on what is working for them. It will be a situation where you just might, I should say it might become a situation where you paint yourself into a corner that you're gonna have to find your way out of. Will I have carbohydrates in my future? Yes. In fact, I told Greg, I was sound asleep having a nightmare that the kids puked all over the trampoline park. Did you? Did anybody have any issues? No. Answer prayer. Um, I said, Greg, can you go get them? And he said, no, I'd rather you go get them. I said, okay. Whew, and I stood up and I said, all right, I'm going to carb my way to bed. I use the word carb as a verb. I'm going to carb my way to bed and then carnivore again tomorrow. Will I have carbs in my future? Probably. I would not bet one nickel that I'll go the rest of my life without carbs. Well, for one thing, because... I have them with me right now and I'm going to enjoy them. Um, but even after the clock strikes midnight tonight, you know, hopefully, hopefully tomorrow I'll be carnivore again because carbohydrates have cons. They also have pros. <clears throat> carnivore has pros. It also has cons. Like all meat 
and animal products taste like meat and animal products. And they're not what I want after a horrendous stomach bug. Anyways, um, carbohydrates cause inflammation, eczema, depression, anxiety, swelling, weight gain, um, acne. The list goes on and on and on. Guys, how many sugar flowers do you all have a day? Two. Two. Can you have as many as you want? No. Well, no, not right now. After you move out, you, you'll you be on your own. You have to self-regulate right now. Um, Franklin, what do I tell you? Um, parenting is kind of like... Um, Oh, bowling. Bowling. And while I'm parenting you all, I'm going to set up what? Uh, bumpers. Bumpers. And then after you move out, what happens to the bumpers? Uh, they don't. They're not there anymore. They're not there anymore. So I'm bowling right now, and I've set up bumpers for these kids. And that's just to try and help them keep headed in the right direction. And um, once they get out on their own, there just won't be bumpers anymore. So they're going to be the ball. And they could end up in the gutter. <laughs> Let's hope they don't. Um, but anyways, what matters to me is that... Uh, I keep my eyes fixed on Jesus. I do what he's telling me to do. I actually also dreamt, Jill, listen to this. I was going to call you and text you, but I'll just say it here. You'll, I, I trust you will hear this, Jill. Um, I dreamt that I was preaching a sermon saying, doesn't it feel good when we can have, and I don't even remember all the words I was saying, but it was an alliteration. They were all starting with R. Doesn't it feel good when we can um, restrain or restrict or, or get ourselves um, squeezed into the right uh, parameters and then I was like preaching but people weren't listening because they were leaving and it was chaotic and there was people over here and we were like actually in a laundromat um, but I was saying but remember we have to remember to allow God to set the parameters preach it Emily in the laundromat while no one's listening that was pretty good so um, L R D kind of sounds like the word lard, doesn't it? When Greg and I both taught special education, we used to talk about the concept of LRE for children. The least, not the most, the least restrictive environment <coughs> for them to succeed, still be a, a success. So like for a child, instead of taking it saying, oh, you've got some behavior issues, you need to go to this one-on-one -on -one room, be locked in there all day long, no, we want them in the, not the most restricted, the least, the least restrictive environment so that they could be as mainstream as possible and function like their peers as much as possible. So I bought a giant funnel for Greg and I, and we said, we're going to think of this as a funnel, but instead of, um, instead of oh, Matthew 13, 16 through 17, I don't know. Um, I'll figure it out. I'll link it below, but it's where Jesus says, wide narrow narrow is the gate that leads to life wide is the gate that leads to destruction um, and few will find that narrow gate I'm paraphrasing I will link that below in the description and in the first comment but Greg and I were saying we want to head towards that narrow path of life um, but we don't want to put any restrictions on ourselves that the Lord wouldn't. And there's scripture that says everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. There are consequences to our actions and our choices, and they're going to be very natural consequences. So will I pay for all these carbs that I have enjoyed these past 48 hours? Probably this week. I'm willing to pay the price and Ultimately, I'm just done talking about this. Okay? That's it. That's it for Carnivlog. Period. That's it. That's the final Carnivlog. Um, again, you all heard me say so many times, life is a process. Let's process it together. Thank you for helping me process through this. I'm processing through a ton of other stuff personally that I don't process through on this channel. I'm going to get back to processing through all that. As far as this food stuff, that's a wrap. That's a wrap on all that. The Lord will lead me. I've gathered the data. I'm convinced you can get everything you need from meat, except Sprite and saltine crackers, and blizzards. Um, Dairy Queen ice cream. You can't get that from a steak. So I don't know. And I just will likely eat that with my kids again. So um, I love you all dearly. 
my prayer is that as we navigate <laughs> these human experiences, we continue to move forward without the disillusion that it's gonna be perfect, it's not. It's never going to look perfect. But we can be confident as children of God, John chapter one, verse 12, that we are headed in the right direction towards our final home in heaven. Mary, what do you always say? Life here on earth is kind of like what? Um, a hotel. Yeah, and where are we headed? To our real home. That's right. So, do we want to take good care of ourselves here? Mm -hmm. Why? Because, um... Well, what did I ask you last night? I said, Mary, what are we supposed to do? I asked you and Claire, what are we supposed to do with everything we have? And you said it, you hit the nail on the head. With every single thing we have, we're supposed to use it. She said, use it and enjoy it. And what are we supposed to use it for? To stay alive. Use it to stay alive and use it to help... Others. Help other people. Help other people do what? Go to heaven. That's right. Disciples make disciples. That's the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to all the nations, commanding them to obey everything I've taught you, something like that. And Jesus said, Lo, I will be I will be there with you to the very end of the age. Go, therefore, and make disciples. Woe is she, willing, obedient, engaged, surrendered, hydrated, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. May we, by the grace of God, go. Willing, obedient, engaged, surrendered, hydrated, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's it. I'm going to do just that. I'm going to go. I'm going to go talk to these kids, see how they did and we have a huge life ahead of us and a very big afternoon lots to get done between now and bedtime that's it I love you dearly I'll still have this channel I might pop in here every once in a while and share something but it will be Christ centered not food centered the food needs to be the focus getting us headed in the right direction with what we need but ultimately, I think of it like this. I'm staring at Christ, and I'll stare at whatever else he puts in my path in front of me as I look towards him. All right. Will somebody say a prayer and end this? This is my final kind of vlog on my, on my channel. Anybody? Well, thank you. Um, Everybody listen up. Uh, dear Lord, I hope that... Mama has a good diet and that she eats good things um, and and that everybody eats good things and and that we have a good rest of our day and amen. Amen. And I called, I texted Greg today from that potluck. I said, Greg, do you want me to bring you anything? He said, yes. He stayed home with a sick kid. And I said, what do you want to bring you? He said, bring me all the good stuff. So Claire said, I hope we, Mama has a good diet and eats good things. Dad eats whatever he wants. Well, no. There's, here's my point. Proverbs 25, 14, I think it is. If you find honey, eat just enough. Trust me, Daddy ate some good things today and I'm about to enjoy some good things. All right, that's it. We're going to get out of here. I love you dearly. We'll talk again soon. Bye. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. Two are better than one because if one falls down, he has the other one to lift them up. There's a better return for their labor. I'm so glad that I've been putting these videos out for, in May, it'll be three years. It's just amazing. While I was recording that, I just got this text message from Karen.
Karen, yes, let's do it, let's do it. And I'm not gonna do it with the goal of, okay, I'm gonna be carnivore and I'm gonna be a perfect carnivore and I'm gonna be in the carnivore community and I'm gonna be on some carnivore panel someday and I'm gonna make carnivore videos and do carnivore interviews and be on carnivore pod- podcasts. No, 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 no. Do I think that a carnivore lifestyle is healthy? Yes, my goodness, when I, when I eat carnivore and I cut out the carbs, my rings fit better, my skin looks better. Um, a lot of things improve. Anyways, Karen, let's do it. This is my official yes. Let's do beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And again, I'm not gonna do it with the um, the goal of, okay, now I'm never gonna touch carbs again. I'm gonna do it with the goal of not touching carbs for February, which will be a fantastic gift for my body. It'll just be a good thing. It'll be what it is. It won't be the beginning of my carnivore life. It won't be the beginning of some unrealistic goal of zero carb perfection. It'll just be what it is. It'll just be a month of nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. So yes, Karen, this is my official yes. And this is also my official invitation to you to join us. Would you like to do nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for February? It's a form of fasting and it um, it's a nice hard reset for your body. It's a great way to detox and it might just have some of us feeling so good we want to continue on. Jill sent me a great, I'm going to link this below Jill. Jill sent me a great video earlier about a woman that got off all social media, social media. She set her phone down for a week and then two weeks and then three weeks and it just went on from there. I don't know. We might do beef butter bacon and eggs for February and then feel so good we want to extend it. Or we might just do beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for February and give our bodies a break from delicious carbonated poison. Yes, I will do the month of February. And Jill, I texted you earlier and told you, I said, February will be better. She said, I hope tomorrow's better. (laughs) I don't know if you were crying like that when you said it, but... I said, tomorrow is better, and today is better than yesterday, and yesterday was better than the day before because we're learning. Um, February will be good. Nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And I'm going to have any and all animal products probably between now and then as kind of like a nice gradual wean off of the carbohydrates in my system right now. I think I even ate a vegetable today. That's unusual for me. Um, Yes, let's do it. If you want to do nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, I'll also link below. I'm going to link a bunch of stuff below. I'll link the Ken, Dr. Ken Berry original beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge video. He used to say 30 days. Now I think he says 90. Um, February sounds about right. Let's do it. That's going to include Valentine's Day. So let's watch out for those boxes of chocolates. Um, there's another Forrest Gump reference. But I'll link that below in case you've never done it. But if you want to do it, do it. Jill, you want to do it? You want to do nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for just the month of February? Again, I love this. I love that the Lord had me share what I was doing to lose all that weight, thinking I was giving. And boy, has that, have I received. I've, re- I've received so much love and support. <clears throat> and... um And Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron. So let's keep doing this. Let's keep going together, shall we? If you want to do nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for the month of February, please join Karen and I. And um, we can comment down below under this video daily as a check-in with a big thumbs up that we did it. I'll probably text Karen back and forth pictures of what I'm eating but I think that sounds good. And I'm gonna consider that a God thing. When I said, let's let God set the, set our parameters. And then while I was recording this video, Karen texted me that, Karen, that's not a coincidence. All right, I love you all dearly. Let me know in the comments below if you're gonna join our beef, butter, bacon, and eggs challenge for the month of February. 
all right? That's it. My son said, Mommy, you said bye like four times. <laughs> That's it. I love you dearly. I love you dearly. I love you dearly. <sighs> I painted a mural six years ago that took me 198 hours. And when I was on that final portion, in that final painting, in that final, and I knew I was going to take the final brush stroke. It's a little hard to do it. That's what this feels like. I don't want to vlog about food anymore. I want to eat it and get on with it. So that's what we're going to do. I love you dearly. Here's my final brush stroke. I love you dearly. And what matters a whole lot more than that is he loves you. God loves you.